Affinity Photo 2 iPad tutorial installing Jane Patterson's LUT category plus using light leak files. Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo 2 iPad tutorial. About a week ago I made a tutorial looking at installing a LUT category made by James Patterson for the PC or Mac version of Affinity Photo. At the time of making that video, I didn't think, or more correct to say I forgot, that the iPad version can also use LUT categories. David Pitcher reminded me that categories can also be used and made on the iPad. So with this information, I decided to make the iPad version of the same tutorial. James Patterson is a writer for many photography magazines and does video and written tutorials for Photoshop and Affinity Photo for those magazines. The website for Digital Camera World will use some of his older tutorials and this is one of them. I believe the original tutorial may have been in Practical Photography Magazine issue 196. I will add a link to this web page in this video's description. On the website there is a video tutorial for the PC and Mac users where James Patterson mainly goes over how to manually edit the image yourself with adjustments and other tools. You should be able to follow this on the iPad as well if you want to go down that route. At the end of the video James quickly talks about the free LUT categories that you can download and install. Further down this web page, James has also added some basic written instructions to again edit the image manually. In between the video and the written instructions, is a paragraph with the download link. Tap on the link to start downloading the zip file. It should download to a folder called downloads unless you have your iPad set up differently. Click on the blue folder icon at the bottom of the iPad interface to find your downloaded file which is called pp196.zip A zip file is a compressed file so you will first need to unzip it. Once you find where it is saved just tap on the zip file and the iPad should unzip it automatically. When it is unzipped open the folder and inside there will be two folders. The first is some light leaks, more on these later and the second has the LUT category file we want. The other three files are images James used in his original magazine tutorials and the tint before image is the one he has used with the free LUT. Now you have the files, let us start the actual tutorial itself. Open Affinity Photo and use the open menu and the import document option. Navigate to the image file and open it. You can use your own image if you prefer. Then we can start to think about adding the LUT category. Very quickly though, LUT stands for look up table and can be used on videos and image files. There are a number of LUT file formats but the one I have seen the most of is called dot cube. A LUT will convert an image's pixels into different colors to alter not just the colors in the image, but things like contrast as well. It is a bit like a Photoshop action, but may not be quite as effective as them. They can take up a fair bit of memory, so it may be best not to have too many installed just add them individually where possible as and when needed. Also, you may see a few adverts on the internet 
that has Affinity Photo presets for sale. These are not presets like those that you can save in Affinity Photo because although they can be saved, they cannot be exported or imported. These presets that are for sale are just collections of LUTs. So be aware of this if you are thinking of buying them. Maybe best to search for free sets or make your own. This next bit gets a bit confusing, so please bear with me. In the PC Mac version of this tutorial, I explained that the individual LUT could be added via the layer menu or by using the adjustment icon found in the layer studio. But to add and use LUTs in a category format, you had to use the adjustment studio, not the two adjustment menus. The iPad has an adjustment studio and selecting LUT or LUT from the studio menu gives you the option to add an individual LUT, much like the PC's adjustment menus. I could not find a way to access categories like in the PC Adjustment Studio. Because the free lined menu icon at the top of the Adjustment Studio panel will let you just toggle the view from the list of icons to images or, or icons or, or, and back again. So in effect, the iPad Adjustment Studio works like the desktop versions to adjustment menus. To get to use categories on the iPad, you need to use the adjustments submenu. At the top of the adjustment studio is an adjustments name with an arrow either side of that name. If it says adjustment, all the available adjustments will be listed below. If you select the free lined menu at the top of the studio, you get the option to toggle between icon list or the image view of the various adjustments. You can use the left and right arrows to scroll through the various adjustment options as you select a name in the list. If that entry has any presets available, they will be listed below the name. When you get to LUT, you will see that by default, Affinity Photo has six preset LUTs. Just tap on one of them to add a LUT to your image. Also, a new layer will be added to the Layers panel and the LUT Adjustment Control panel will also open. The free lined menu at the top of the Studio panel will, with most options, only give you the option to toggle the view of the adjustments from pictures or icons. The LUT option though will give you two of these three lined menu icons. Tapping the smaller top one will give you the option to create new category, import category and sort categories by name. I am fairly certain that LUT is the only option in the adjustments that has these two menus with extra options. If you want to add a single preset to a LUT or any other adjustments preset listing, you need to tap on the Add Preset button in their Adjustments Control Panel, which is a button with a plus sign on it. The bigger and lower of these free lined menus will give you the options Rename Category, Duplicate Category, delete category, plus entries to import, export and sort individual LUTs rather than categories. If you want to save a bit of time finding an entry on the adjustment listing, you can tap and hold the currently named adjustment, move your finger down slightly and then swipe to the left. This will open a listing. You can scroll and find the adjustments you want 
and then tap on its name to select it. Next I'm going to install the LUT category into Affinity Photo. Now you can use any document or image but I'm going to use the one from James's tutorial. Find and select LUT from the sub menu of the Adjustment Studio to get the extra free lined menus. Tap the smaller menu icon at the top of the studio to get the menu options import category. Navigate to where I have downloaded the unzipped PP196 file. Open the free BW Tintin set folder to get the BW Tintin set dot a flats file. As mentioned before, LUT files format will most likely be .cube and as such can be used by many video and image, ed image editors. But the .a flats file is an affinity photo only format and is a category file that holds many LUTs within. Select the file to install it into affinity photo. As you can see, after installing the category, we now have two categories, default, which has the original six LUTs in, and below that, BW toning. So you have various, quite a few actually, BW toning LUTs. So you can just click on one of these, or any of these, to select one that you like. Now I, on this particular picture I quite like the platinum one which I have now added. So that is pretty much how you can install a category into Affinity Photo iPad. Now, on top of each of these uh, categories, you have that free lined menu, and you can click on this and you, know, you can rename the category if you want, you know, or delete it, or, sort of, or import in new LUTs just into that particular category. If you want to, so if you're making your own category, you can sort of add in all your own single LUTs. So that is pretty much how that works. And what I will do is I will come out of there and I will now go to look at the light leaks. Now, if I sort of go back to the sort of start menu and if I come to open and import document and I will go back to the downloads folder and back to that PP196 folder and like I said earlier in this tutorial we had the light leaks where there are 32 images of light leaks and I'm just going to pick the very last one number 32 to open that image and then I'm going to go back again open import document and I'm going to open the rest uh, retro start image of this girl here um, now this light leaks files, I believe, are from James's uh, tutorial that was in the same magazine, but I don't know where the link of the video tutorial is. Um, I'm guessing it was possibly a Photoshop tutorial within that magazine, um, but we can use these in Affinity Photo as well. So I will select that image and let me just come back to this light leaks image and come to the edit menu 
and I will copy that come back to the girl image and again come down to the edit and click on paste now let me just reduce the size of this so we can see it and so then we have the two layers here the girl layer and the light leak layer and I will have the light leak layer highlighted come to the move tool and then I'll just click and hold one of these nodes down here to resize this light leak layer to fit the image and then I will click on the three dot icon in the layer studio to get the layer options and somewhere down here we should have the blend modes here yes yeah, so again a bit like the other menu where you drag down slightly and then swipe left you get the long list of blend modes and we're going to go for screen and let me just move this image over so it's not there we go so at the moment this is a hundred percent opacity i mean it's okay but it's a bit over the top for my opinion so i'm just going to lower this down and just bring this up around the 50 percent mark yeah that'll do and then just come back to the layers menu and that should be that so as you can see not only do you get the LUTs in James Patterson's tutorial and his downloads you also get these light leak files that you can add to your image and give them a sort of vintage look so hopefully that covers everything sorry it's been a bit long windy and wordy um, but there's a lot to explain and get through especially for the beginners on the iPad so thank you for watching and goodbye